This video here is gonna be about opening a thrift store here in the year 2022. Right now it's May of 2022, so we're almost halfway through the year. Inflation is a huge deal right now. Prices on everything is, are through the roof. Gas, groceries, all of your just, you know, essentials, like anything and everything from shampoo and toilet paper, like I said, groceries, you know, all every type of food, going out to eat's got more expensive. Everything right now is more expensive and it keeps trickling down to every little area incrementally, you know, it keeps going up and up and up. So is opening up a thrift store right now a good idea? Well, I mean, if that's your dream to do, if you've got a plan in place, if you've got some kind of experience in reselling, um, you know, reselling items and this is what you've been wanting to do, then there's you know there's never a bad time it's always a good time to do something to start something and a thrift store can do good when the economy is really good and a thrift store will do good when the economy is really bad it might do better at certain times of course when the economy is booming or like a year or two ago when people were getting stimulus money i mean they were just spending it everywhere i mean people were coming in here just buying buggy loads of stuff but that's not normal but when times are tough for people, they're going to start looking to thrift stores to buy stuff. Um, and then there's some people that just, you know, they're going to shop at thrift stores anyways because they're always looking for a deal. They're looking for something unique. And they just, you know, some people have just learned that there's a lot of good stuff that you can find at thrift stores. You can get brand new stuff at thrift stores. You can get antique stuff and you can get a lot of unique stuff. I'm going to kind of show you here real quick what I've got going on. Okay, this is our store right here. It's 18,000 square foot, so I guess as far as thrift stores go, it's on the bigger end, but there's definitely way, way bigger. Um, it's probably about the size of a normal Goodwill. You know, I've seen Goodwills kind of fluctuate in size, but this is about the size of an average Goodwill, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, like a size of like a Walmart or something like that, that's over 100,000 square feet. And a couple of things to show you. See, we sit... There's the main road there. You just saw that car go by, those cars are going by. That's the main road. So we have weird easement here. There's a gas station, a Chevron, and this little strip here. We sit up on this hill behind the gas station. So you can see us when you pull in, but we're not right on the main road, but we get a little bit cheaper rent. We're paying closer to warehouse rent than we are retail rent for this building right here. Even though we're kind of halfway in between as far as the space, it's kind of warehouse, kind of retail. So you gotta get a good deal on your spot. If you're gonna pay full on retail and be right on the main road, that's not even a, a huge road. Like you're, if you're over on a big four lane road that's super, super busy, you're gonna pay crazy. If, you better have some money saved up and you better have a plan in place immediately to start making money. And you're not gonna have any time to play around and you know, kind of, you know, trial and error and that kind of thing. So you wanna find a um, spot where the rent's good it can, be a, it can be just a straight up warehouse. That's what we started in. It was a 100% warehouse back in the business park. Another thing, you can rent U-Hauls. We rent U-Hauls. If you've got the space, if you got extra parking, it's definitely something to think about. And that's not a huge amount of time and effort that we put into U-Haul being a dealer. All you have to do is contact U-Haul and say, hey, I wanna be a dealer. I've got a business going. And you know, we got places to park your truck and trailers. And do pretty good, adds a good bit of uh, money. For us, I mean, it's going to vary from location to location and wherever you're at and all that kind of stuff for us. Anywhere, probably on average, $500 to $1,000 a month um, in commission from U-Haul. Okay, we're going to go up to the store here. Okay, we are closed. It's about 7 o'clock. We closed at 6 o'clock this evening, um, but we are closed now. Normally, we have all of this. Okay, we have this overhang here. All of that is normally clothes down there. We put all our clothes. We have rolling racks. All of our clothes got out there. On that end down there, we put, um, we've got big rolling racks and we put like, um, we buy pallets of Lowe's and Home Depot stuff and we put all that kind of stuff, tools and home improvement items. So you got to use every little bit of space we have. This is, you know, not inside the store or whatever. A lot of people would never use it and it would just be empty. But hey, it's got a roof over it and you know it's on the sidewalk so we roll the stuff out here and we use it and we add a lot of extra square footage to the store essentially here you know and, and opportunities to sell stuff you gotta have space you gotta try to get the most amount of space you can for the cheapest price obviously the most bang for your buck i've seen people move into places that are just too small a thousand square foot you know in those little like that strip mall down there an average 
you know, size place in that that's like normally like a salon is in or something like that, that's not gonna be big enough to resell stuff. You're just gonna have no room. You're gonna put, you put one bedroom set in there and half the place is taken up. You gotta have, you gotta have a little more room than that. I'm really saying you need to have, starting out, like 2,000 square foot or more. Our, our original space, our original warehouse we started in was 2,000 square foot and we quickly, within a few months, we took the space next to it, which doubled to 4,000 square foot. A few months after that, we took the space, we had three spaces all connected. It was 6,000 square foot, which was a good amount of space, but still we outgrew that. We needed more space. So you really gotta be at a bare minimum starting out 2,000 square foot. If it's a thousand square foot or even less, you're gonna have a very difficult time. You're just not gonna have the space to have enough stuff in there to have an, enough variety to sell a lot of stuff. All right, we come in the store here and we have, okay, this is all, all this stuff right here is all the stuff that's normally out there. So we're closed, so we roll all that in. Over there, there's black racks. That's the stuff that normally goes out there. But when you come in, here's our, you know, register area, but I'm just going to kind of show you. We have booths that we rent to people. So this whole space right here will be rented by someone just because, so we don't have to fill the whole space. So they would pay us um, a monthly rent, and then we would also take 10% of sales. So it works out good for people. Some people do very well. Some people struggle a little bit because, you know, they're kind of learning what they're doing or they don't put the, you know, put the effort into it. But that's another thing. If you have a large amount of space, you can rent space to other people. There's always people wanting space to sell stuff. All right, and then, okay, look over here. This is where we put all of our, and it's gonna look kind of rough because it's the end of the day and we, we clean up in the morning. Um, all the little junk, we just sell all this stuff for a dollar. All this stuff down here, everything, DVDs, all that stuff. And then we run sales, fill a bag for a dollar, all that stuff. But, Everything down through here is all dollar stuff. We get a lot of the stuff out of storage units and we fill this up every single day, all the time. We bring buggy loads up here. It never ends. And if you come look over here, people have got, people are selling appliances. This is all vendor space over here, you know, that they're renting for me. So we get the rent, we get the, uh, the, um, the commission. I'm gonna come this way. This is all our area. That's our area down through there, but we can't get down through there right now with the racks. This is all, this is our shelves. This is our shelves. This whole middle area, we, we put um, furniture up there. We sell candy bars and we have a fridge over there and drinks. People come in here and they're thirsty and they're hungry. Two things, you're gonna make money when they buy it. And then also people start getting really thirsty and they'll leave They'll because you know, they, they came in here already thirsty and they didn't even realize it. So if they start getting really thirsty, all they can think about is I'm thirsty and they're gonna leave to go get something to eat or whatever. But if you have a drink, a lot of times they'll buy the drink from you and they'll keep shopping because it satisfies their thirst. Just something little there to think about. But furniture, this is, a, this is a vendor here. This is all our space. But my thing is we sell anything and everything. We sell old stuff, we sell new stuff, we sell furniture, we sell smalls, everything. So my goal is for when somebody comes in here, there's the opportunity to sell anyone something. They're not all gonna buy something, but if all you have is antiques, if you want to do that, then so be it. But if you're going to do the thrift thing, you want to have everything. Some people are like, I'm not going to sell clothes. People buy a ton of clothes. Some people come in looking for clothes and then they will buy other stuff. You got to have little stuff, big stuff and everything. And come back here. See, lots of space. You got to have a lot of stuff. You got to have a lot of stuff in here if you're going to make money. If you if you just if it's really sparse and everything, but you got to have your shelves loaded down and you got to have some big ticket items like the furniture. And then look, we're selling appliances back here. Big ticket items. Look, 1,350, 1,100, 1,500. You might not sell one of these every day, but when you do, that's a big chunk of change. That, <clears throat> that goes toward your sales. So you gotta have those big chunks, but you gotta have all that little stuff too. If you focus on one or the other in a thrift store, you're gonna have a more difficult time. Another thing is, if you're just gonna sit back and wait on customers to come, you know, just come driving by and come in, it's gonna be very difficult in this day and age. And there's so many ways to market. Use Facebook, use Twitter, use Instagram, whatever. You gotta use all these online resources to tell people about your business. And you gotta do it every day, on and on and on. Look, everybody knows about McDonald's, but McDonald's, they spend millions, commercials all the time. They run promotions, they have, you know, the McRib, something that they bring back every now and then, gets people excited to come back to McDonald's. 
even though everybody knows about McDonald's, everybody knows about Coke, everybody knows about those businesses, but they keep advertising. So it's a small thrift store. If you think that you're just gonna sit here and wait on people, it's just not gonna happen. You know, even if you're on a really, really busy road, because your rent's gonna be so high, you've gotta, you still have to work at that. Even if you're like, well, tons of people are coming in, but it's like, how many more could come in if you're just putting word out there nonstop? Even just little, you know, it doesn't have to be anything major, but just constantly making sure people don't forget about you. They might know about you, but you gotta keep them, keep your business fresh in their mind. And then another thing we do to kind of help this, help the store and have an, uh, a pretty big online presence to help get people in here is we run an online auction. This whole area back here, we're in the middle of setting it up right now, because you can see this is still empty. That we're all kind of filling in right now, but we run an online auction every single week. It ends every Friday. So people are coming in on Friday to preview. People come in every Saturday to pick their items up. And it's just, it's getting people in the store constantly. They're buying stuff. That's part of the business, them buying stuff there. And it's also getting them in the store. And then they come over here and buy something. And they, they're in the store all the time. They might not buy much, but they're thinking, okay, he has refrigerators. Refrigerator goes out. They're in here all the time for the auction. So they're like, hey, I'm going to go down there and buy a refrigerator. It all works together. People, and then the auction benefits from the store. People come into the store and they see this and like, well, what is this? What's the auction? We tell them about the auction. They start bidding and then bam, they're bidding here and they're shopping out here. So you got to have something, you know, some way or another, you got to either be selling stuff online, a website, or, you know, we're doing the auction. You got to have definitely have some stuff going online it's just it's just the way it is i mean all these see companies that have been around forever that have gone out of business in the last few years because they were slow to you know to beef up their online presence and then you have companies like you know walmart you know they're all you know they sell tons of stuff in the store but you can go buy anything online from them also they didn't hesitate to make sure that they had a huge online presence because as big as walmart was they were like hey you know we'll end up we'll be like kmart kmart's pretty much gone they were once a huge deal, but they were kind of, Walmart came in, took it, you know, took over the discount store, you know, deal from them and they kind of faded away. But anyways, so that's kind of a little, little tour of the store and tour of my business and kind of some tips and my thoughts on starting a thrift store here in 2022. Like I said, you can definitely do it. You know, inflation, you know, is a big deal right now. So you got to look at all your expenses and everything, but you know, thrift business is, is like I always say, it's recession proof. When, when everybody has tons of money and everything's good, you're going to sell a lot of, you're going to sell stuff, you know, because thrift people are going to come no matter what. When times get a little bit tighter, people's money gets tighter. So some of those regular thrifters not, might not buy as much, but then you're going to get, you know, new people coming in that were normally going to be shopping new. They're going to be coming to your store because they just don't have the money right now because, you know, their budget's getting so tight. So like I said, it's recession proof so it's definitely if this is what you want to do if you've got a plan in place if you you know have ways to get inventory storage auctions is a great great way that's what i do pallets you can do a state clean out so many different ways or you can do booths like i do that help me out and have people bring stuff in so you don't have to stock you know all this space but that's just a few tips. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, if you wanna see videos like this, all of our storage auction videos and all the other videos relating to resale, then subscribe to the channel. Y'all have a good one.